Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my first video of 2021. I'm super amped to be doing these videos again. Yeah! The first video I want to do is a video on how to Dockerize like a really simple Node.js API. Docker is becoming one of those tools in the developer's toolbox that you're just supposed to know how to use. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to docker.com, click get started and install Docker for whatever operating system you're using. Once you have Docker installed, um, you should have access to the Docker command line. If you have issues with that, just let me know and I'll try and help you out. Cool, so first off, what is Docker? Well, Docker is a way to combine your code with the environment you need to run your code. Say you need Node version 12 combined with MySQL version 5 point whatever, you will always run your, your app and your code using those versions. That will be shared amongst developers when you're developing and in production, the environment will remain the same. Cool, so while filming, I realized I didn't explain how Docker actually works. What Docker does is it helps you build up images um, from other images. So you can take like a very bare bones Debian distribution and then start running commands on top of that and build your own environment. Or you can build on top of another environment such as a node environment. And then you can copy your code into that image. And then what you do is you use Docker to run those images and Docker creates a container which runs the images and allows your code to interact with an environment. Now this is a virtual machine running on another machine. So it's separate to the machine it's running on. What that does is allows you to run multiple different containers with completely different environments on the same machine, which is really cool. So let me go through this simple Node.js API and then we'll look at how we can create an image with it. So here's the API. Basically all it is is this file where we hit the base path and we send the text hello world through. We're listening on port 3000. We have two packages. The first dependency is express and we have a dev dependency nodemon which restarts the API every time we make a change. I have no node modules installed. I have just the package.json and the index.js file. So let's dockerize the app. To start off, we have to create a new file and call it docker file. This is file name that Docker understands as a Docker file. And then the first line of any Docker file is from, from base image. So what this image is, is the image we want to use to start building our application. So we could use a very bare bones base image and then install node. But instead of doing that, we can actually search through Docker Hub. So go to hub.docker.com and we can see that node themselves have an image and it was updated five hours ago. And we can see here are all the different types of node images. So for this project, I want to use node 14 from node tagged with version 14. Like we said, Docker is a way to combine our code with the environment. So what I want to do is copy this code. So from my source to my destination. But before I do that, I want to set the working directory. So think of this as like another server. So now I want to create and CD into a directory called app. And that's just so we know that all our code is going to be on this image in our directory called app. And we're going to copy all the code. And then what we need to do is install our node packages. So we can go run npm install, and that will install our packages, create our node modules file. And lastly, what we need to do is actually run this project. So we saw in our package.json, we need to run npm run dev and that will run nodemon index.js starting our API. So cool. So we can create a command and it needs npm run dev. So this command line gets run every time we run the image. So when we create a container, this command line gets run. These run commands get run when we build the image. So that's why command is different to run. The last thing I want to add to the Docker file is that we can see in our index.js that our app listens on port 3000. So what I want to do in our Docker file is expose port 3000. And with that, we can build our image. So we can go docker build dot. And then we see we have an image successfully built. So what you want to do is copy this ID here. This is the ID of our image. And if we clear this, and go docker image ls. We can see we have two images here. We have node and then we have our image on top of this. Awesome. So now how do we run this image? Well, remember you copied that ID. So then you go docker run 
and the image ID. And then we'll start running our image. Now we're running the application, which means we should be able to go to localhost port 3000. Not quite. If we run docker container ls, we can see this container that we just started. And this is the name generated for it by Docker. So what's happening now is Docker is running this image as a container. It's a virtual environment running on our machine, but we don't have any access into this environment. So what we have to do is when we run it, map our port 3000 to the containers port 3000. I can copy this name here and I can just go Docker stop the container, just clear the screen. And if we go Docker container ls, we can see that we have no more running containers. If we go docker container ls minus a, we'll see that here is the container that we ran and we just exited it. And we can see that it's now stopped on this side. So I'm gonna clear this terminal and I'm gonna clear this terminal. And this time when I run the container, I'm gonna map our port 3000 to the exposed port 3000. So I'm gonna go docker run with a dash p command to map our localhost port to the port exposed by the container. Then I'm gonna run it, and then if we refresh this, cool, we have our API running, and that's awesome. If I change this Hello World to Hello World 2 and save it and refresh this, it's not updating, and that's because this code is static inside of this image, it's already been built. We wanna map our folder to the folder inside of the container so that when we update the folder on our local machine, it knows that it must use the folder updated inside of the container. So how do we do that? Well, let's stop this again. So we can go docker container ls, copy this name, go docker stop the name. So what we wanna do is when we run this image, we wanna map these files into the container that gets run. So right now I've lost the image ID. So to get the image ID back, we just go docker image ls. I'm gonna copy this ID again. Then we can go docker run, map the ports in our machine. So 3000 to the port 3000, and the image ID. But before the image ID, I wanna say dash v. And then I'm gonna map the present working directory. So we can go like this, pwd and I wanna map it to slash app. This doesn't work on every environment. So the other thing you can do is actually just go copy path here and you'll get this kind of path. Get rid of the index.js. I'm just going to use this path here. And now if we run this, we get an error and that's because it's also trying to map node modules and we don't have any node modules installed. They're all in the, the image. So the way we sort that out is when we build our image, we can go volumes and what we're doing now is creating an anonymous volume we know the directory is app and node modules and what this will do is not copy in our node modules but use the node modules on the image so now what we have to do is rebuild this image but now when i build the image i want to name the image so i'm going to go docker build dot but before this i'm going to add dash t and i'm going to name this image um node api version one and now we clear this and we run this image. We can go docker run port 3000 map to port 3000. And then we can do our volume again. So we had our volume and that was the directory. We want to map it to app. And then the name of our image, which is node API v1. And if we run this, it listens. We can refresh this and we have we have hello world two. And if we change this to three, this should update to three. Now there's one more thing I want to add to the Docker file to make it a bit more performant. So I'm just going to Docker container ls and I'm going to stop this container. Stop. The way that Docker works is it caches layer by layer. I only want to run npm install when we actually update our package.json file. So I'm going to move this copy line underneath here. Here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say copy, copy the package.json into .app. So what this does, it only runs npm install once we've updated package.json, which makes sense. Then we copy in our code and we do the rest of everything. So I know this is like a quick and dirty intro into Docker, but I think it's enough to get you up and running. Till the next one, cheers.